Good day. This is Joe Brill, um, and on behalf of the American College of Gastroenterology, the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, and the American Gastroenterological Association, thank you so much for attending this webinar on understanding the RUC survey process. Next slide. During this um, brief presentation, we'll go through the survey basics of the RUC survey, the purpose of the survey, who does what. We'll break down the survey into seven easy steps. We'll go through questions and what happens next. Next slide. So why are the surveys being conducted? The Gastroenterology Society's need your help to assure that relative values will be accurately and fairly presented to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services during this revision process. This is important to you and other physicians because these values determine the rate at which Medicare and other payers reimburse for procedures. Next slide. So when are the responses due, you might ask? Well, they are due by November the 21st at midnight Pacific time. You will not be able to submit your survey responses after the deadline, and that's because the survey data must be analyzed before it can be submitted to the RUC with recommendations from the Gastroenterology Societies. Next slide. So what's the purpose of this survey? The purpose is to obtain estimates of the time and complexity required in performing a procedure, and to obtain an estimate of a recommended work relative value, or RVU. Next slide. The survey asks you to compare the time, complexity, and the physician work of the survey procedures compared to an existing procedure. A list of potential reference procedures has been provided for comparison purposes. Next slide. So why are the surveys being conducted? The ACG, the AGA, and the ASGE are conducting work surveys for the following procedures. Based on the data from the surveys, the societies will then recommend a work value to the RUC. During this process, we will be surveying two existing and two new codes for flexible sigmoidoscopy, six existing and eight new codes for colonoscopy through a stoma, and 10 existing and five new codes for colonoscopy. We're next gonna go through the codes that are being surveyed. On our next slide, we have the flexible sigmoidoscopy codes. We will be surveying at this time two existing flexible sigmoidoscopy codes, 45341, flexible sigmoidoscopy with endoscopic ultrasound, and 45342, flexible sigmoidoscopy, endoscopic ultrasound with fine needle aspiration. Two new flexible sigmoidoscopy codes will be surveyed, 4534X3, that's flexible sigmoidoscopy with endoscopic mucosal resection, and 4534X4, flexible sigmoidoscopy with banding. On our next slide, we will go through the colonoscopy with stoma codes. Existing codes include 44388, colonoscopy through stoma, 44389 with biopsy, 44390 with foreign body removal, 44391 with control of bleeding, 44392 with hot biopsy, and 44394 with polypectomy. On the next slide, we have the new colonoscopy with stoma codes that will be surveyed. Code 4439X1 is colonoscopy with stoma, uh, colonoscopy true stoma with ablation, and this includes pre and post dilation and guide wire placement. Code 4439X2 is colonoscopy through stoma with stent placement, which includes pre and post dilation and guide wire placement. Code 4439X3 is colonoscopy through stoma with endoscopic mucosal resection. Code 4439X4 is colonoscopy through stoma with submucosal injection. Code 4439X5 is colonoscopy through stoma with balloon dilation. Code 4439X6 is colonoscopy through stoma with endoscopic ultrasound. Code 4439X7 is colonoscopy through stoma with endoscopic um, ultrasound with fine needle aspiration. 
and code 4439X8 is colonoscopy through stoma with decompression. On the next slide, we have the existing colonoscopy codes that will be surveyed. And this includes 45378, the base code for colonoscopy, 45379 with forward body removal, 45380 with biopsy, 45381 with submucosal injection, 45382 with control of bleeding, 45384 with hot biopsy, 45385 with polypectomy, and 45386 with dilation of stricture. On the next slide, we have the new colonoscopy codes. Code 4538X1 is colonoscopy with ablation, which includes pre- and post-dilation and guide wire placement. Code 4538X2 is colonoscopy with stent placement, which includes pre- and post-dilation and guide wire placement. Code 4538X3 is colonoscopy with endoscopic mucosal resection. Code 4538X4 is colonoscopy with decompression. Code 4538X5 is colonoscopy with banding. There are also several colonoscopy codes that have been revised. On the next slide, you will see that code 45391, colonoscopy with endoscopic ultrasound, has a um, revision that instructs the um, individual that this is limited to a sexual colon. And that 4539X2 is colonoscopy with EUS with bineedal aspiration AN. The, again, the EUS is limited to a section of the colon. So let's go forward. Who does what? The AMA Specialty Society RBS Update Committee of the RUC oversees the survey process. The RUC will make recommendations regarding work, RVUs, and practice expense inputs to CMS. The specialty societies coordinate the process for our professions. We distribute the work surveys to members to obtain physician work and practice expense data and the specialty societies will then submit the survey results to the AMA's RUC. On the next slide, you will see that the specialty societies submit recommendations to the RUC for physician work, practice expense inputs, and professional liability insurance crosswalks. The recommendations are presented at the RUC meetings, and these occur three times a year. On the next slide, the RUC sends its recommendations for work RVUs practice expense inputs, and liability insurance crosswalks to Medicare in May, and that these results remain confidential until the CMS publish, publish, um, the CMS publication of the final rule in November. Values will then go into effect in January of the following year. On our next slide, we'll then go through how to partition the RUC survey into seven easy steps. In step one, we'll ask you to review the code descriptor and the vignette. The vignette is a short description of a typical patient. In step two, we'll ask you to review the introduction and complete your contact information. In step three, please identify a reference procedure. Step four asks you to estimate your time. Step five asks you to compare the surveyed procedure to a reference procedure. Step six, ask questions about moderate sedation. And in step seven, we'll ask you to estimate your work relative value. Shall we proceed? Let's go to the next slide. Step one um, involves reviewing the code descriptor and the vignette. The vignette describes a typical clinical scenario for the procedure. You may have performed the procedure on a patient different than the typical one described in the vignette. And that's okay. We ask you to please remember that you can still use your experience to guide your responses. So in the next slide, you'll see that we ask you to complete the survey instrument using the typical patient described in the vignette. You will have a chance in the survey instrument to indicate if you do not believe the vignette provided describes your typical patient. And you will have the opportunity to provide a description of your typical patient for the code being surveyed. 
And step two, on the next slide, this reviews the introduction and asks you to complete your contact information. Although the contact and basic practice information is being collected, your name is never forwarded to the AMA or used for tracking purposes. This survey is to be completed independently without coaching or assistance, with the exception of clarification from specialty society staff. If you are inappropriately contacted regarding this survey, please notify specialty society staff immediately. For any questions about the survey, you may contact society staff. Leslie Narimore at the AGA, L. Narimore at gastro.org, 410-349-7455. Denise Garris at the ASGE, Denise at Chorus Group, K-O-R-R-I-S-G-R-O-U-P, all one word, dot com, 202-527-1069. And Brad Conway at the ACG, bconway at gi.org, 301-263-9029. On the next slide, step three, identify a reference procedure. You will be provided with a list of reference service procedures. Please select a procedure from the list that is most similar in time and work to the new or revised CPT code descriptor and typical patient and service described. The reference procedure that you select does not have to be equal in work in your judgment to the survey procedure, but it should be similar in work. Next slide, step four, estimate your time. Using the vignette for the survey service, please estimate how much time to the minute it takes you to perform the procedure for the typical patient. While certain patients may require additional time and effort, the survey is intended to estimate the work for the typical patient. Your estimate should be based on your personal experience and the typical patient. On the next slide, we'll start with the definition of some of the periods. The pre-service period includes physician services provided from the day before the procedure or service until the time of the procedure or service. Please note that the administration of moderate sedation is included in the pre-service period. On the next slide, we uh, will further define the pre-service period. Pre-service period includes assessment of the patient's status for indications, contraindications, and fitness to undergo the endoscopy procedure. This may include procedural workup, review of records, communicating with other professionals, patient and family, coordinating scheduling, and preparation and obtaining consent. Dressing, scrubbing, and waiting before the operative procedure. Preparing the patient and needed equipment for the operative procedure. And positioning the patient and other non-first scope in to last scope out work in the OR is part of the pre-service period. The pre-service period includes assessment of the patient's fitness for administration of moderate sedation if personally administered or supervised by the endoscopist. And it includes all time for the administration of moderate sedation from the first dose administered until the endoscopic procedure begins, if necessary, if personally administered or supervised by the endoscopist, including the management of sedation. Let's go to the next slide. The pre-service period does not include consultation or evaluation at which the decision to provide the procedure was made. It does not include distinct evaluation and management services provided in addition to the procedure. It does not include mandated services, and it does not include staff time, such as scheduling the procedure or providing instructions to the patient. On the next slide, the interest service period. The interest service period includes all physician first scope in to last scope out work that is a necessary part of the procedure. Our next slide, the post-service period. The post-service period includes physician services provided on the day of the procedure after the procedure has been performed. We'll go to the next slide with some further clarification. The post-service period includes the non 
first scope in to last scope out work in the operative room, patient stabilization in the recovery room or special unit, communicating with the patient and other professionals, which can include, include, which can include written and telephone reports and orders, and patient visits on the day of the operative procedure. The post-service periods includes an assessment for fitness to discharge from the procedural area when performed by the physician. And it includes discharge instructions and counseling to the patient and caregivers when performed by the physician. On the next slide, the post-service period does not include the following. It does not include unrelated evaluation and management services provided during the post-operative period. It does not include a return to the operating room for a related procedure during the post-operative period. It does not include unrelated procedures or services performed by the same physician during the post-operative period. And it does not include calling the patient and communicating results of lab tests. On the next slide, step five, comparing the complexity and intensity of the surveyed service to the reference service that you've selected should be done in terms of four components, time, mental effort and judgment, technical skill and physical effort, and psychological stress. On the next slide, let's go through some definitions. Your physician work does not include services provided by support staff who are employed by your practice and cannot bill separately. That includes registered nurses, licensed practical nurses, medical secretaries, receptionists, and technicians. We'll go to the next slide, step six, moderate sedation. Moderate sedation is a service provided by the operating physician or under the direct supervision of the physician performing the procedure to allow for the sedation of the patient with or without analgesia. For the purposes of the RUC survey, sedation and analgesia delivered separately by an anesthesiologist not performing the primary procedure is not considered moderate sedation. Next slide, step seven, estimating your work RVU. This is very important because in this final step, you will be asked to estimate the work relative value unit. You are asked to consider the value assigned to the reference procedure in developing your estimate. The survey methodology attempts to set the work RVU of the procedure relative to the work RVU of the comparable and established reference procedure. Next slide. So how are the surveys being conducted? Well, they're being conducted online. Look for an email from gastro.org at softekdc.com. The subject line will say GI survey for CPT code with a list of the codes being surveyed. So please don't forget to check your spam folder. And please also note the link is specifically for you. If you have a colleague who would like to complete the survey, please ask them to email their information to surveys at asge.org. So again, next slide, next steps. Don't forget you will receive an email message from gastro.org at softekdc.com. The email will contain the link to the survey platform and your personal login information. When you log in, you will have immediate access to all of your surveys. And please don't forget to submit your completed surveys by midnight Pacific time on November the 21st. Do you still have any questions? You can contact Leslie Narrowmore at the AGA, Denise Garris at ASGE, or Brad Conway at the ACG. And with that, thank you so much. Take care and have a pleasant day.